Hi guys, Graham here again, Bainbridge Technologies. Um, today I'd just like to quickly talk to you about connecting your smart shunt up. I've previously touched in, in other videos, you know, like how to set it up positive wise and the, and the, neg and the uh, settings and so forth. But a lot of people get really confused about where they run their negatives to and they don't necessarily run all the negatives to the system side of the shunt. And if they don't do that, they, you end up with mixed readings because it means that whatever you're not connecting to that system side is not getting counted. So uh, I had a customer the other day that had uh, all his loads and everything connected to the system minus of here, but he has his DC to DC connected directly up to the battery um, negative as well as the battery negative going to here. So that means then that all the power out of his 30 amp DC to DC was never going through here. So what was happening is it was counting the power that was going out of the battery, but not going back in. So even though his battery was fully charged, his reading was down around 60 or 70% all the time. Um, but when I looked at it and said, well, what's the battery voltage? And he said, oh, it's sitting at 13.6. I said, well, mate, your battery's fully charged, uh, a lithium battery. Um, but it's only showing 70% on there. And when we actually went through and deciphered it, we actually found it on the side. I said, start up your car. We started up the car and instantly we could see that there was no amps being registered going in through this on the, uh, on the Bluetooth on the phone. So it's, it is really important, but it is really simple. It, you know, a lot of people might think it's really hard and it's confusing. The easiest way that I can explain this is um, you have your positive and negative across your, your terminals on your battery. All the negatives from all your charging and all your loads all go then onto that negative side of the battery and all the positives go onto the positive side of the battery. Your positives can still stay on the positive side of the battery and anything in between which connected to that positive. But literally just think of it this way. Take all the negatives, just think of imagining, I'd not literally do it, or in some cases you need to, take the negatives off of where they would normally be on the battery and go to the system minus or the negative that it says to system minus, the system side of the shunt, and then connect this back to the battery from here to there. That means then everything that was connected to the battery is now connected to here, but goes through here to the battery. And the reason being is because if you don't have the negative of any of your loads or charges connected here, as I said before, it won't go through the shunt. So therefore then it can't calculate that into its um, uh, algorithm and therefore then will not give you a proper reading. And that's how you get state of charge. If you start, uh, say you've got a 100 amp hour battery, so you're fully charged and you've got 100 amps in that battery. If you take 20 amps out of that battery, then it needs to know that there's 20 amps going out, so it will count it, so that will give you a state of charge of 80%. However, if that negative of that load that's pulled that 20 amps out wasn't on the system side and was on the battery side or directly to the battery negative or to the battery, you could pull 20 amps out of your battery, but it will still say that's at 100% because it hasn't gone through the shunt. So this is where you, it's easy to, to distinguish if you've got if you find that you're getting mismatched uh, readings, the, the, the amps don't, or the state of charge doesn't relate to your calculations of the amps or it doesn't relate to the voltage, um, then we know that we're way out. I mean, I've had people where it says they've got 90% state of charge on there. They go, oh, we've got 90%, but the, the voltage is 12.9, which means mate, you've only got probably less than 10% left in your battery. So it, it is important that, that you do do that and follow that rule. As I said, the easiest thing is take all those loads that you'd normally connect to your battery and put them to there. Now, another way of doing this, which because you don't want to have you know, heaps of things piled up on here either, a couple of decent sized connections on here at most, because you end up building up resistance through all the different times you've got stuff piled on top of each other, and that doesn't work either. The better way of doing that then, and the simpler way is, you have one big cable that can carry all the current of the loads that you've got, that's important, to your battery. And then you have the same size cable going from this side to a buzz bar. And then you can connect all your negatives up to that buzz bar. And same thing. So therefore then all those negatives are on this side, whether it be a four post, six post, eight post, 12 post buzz bar, however many that you want, uh, all connects to that side and then goes to there and same, same. So really simple to do. So hopefully that's helped you and cleared up a little bit of confusion in regards to that. But um, yeah, that's, that's how easy it is anyway. So until next time, bye for now guys.